transmission. Hey, Overlord. It's me again, Dreg. I've had some viewers recommend I make a Star Wars style droid. So I did. This build, like any great story, starts with a tie in to the previous build. I don't know what happened, but the algorithm decided it hates me, so if you want to help the channel, go back and watch the previous build. One unexpected pleasure I get from doing these builds is going to thrift stores. It's like a treasure hunt for trash. I found this toy. I believe it's a Paw Patrol. I'm not sure. Disassembly. Time When I go hunting for garbage, I like to find toys and bits that have moving parts and stuff so I can have something to build with. I also look for screws. Stuff that is easy to take apart and I don't have to break it. Even though this toy had tons of screws, it was <laughs> take apart. Some of the screws were inaccessible, so I had to drill out the holes to make I can remove the screws. After much fiddling, I finally was able to access the inner work inside so that I had something to work with. Aside from the complexity of the toy, one other selling point was the amount of wheels it came with. I wanted to make a wheeled droid. I know this segment of the video is really long, but I wanted you to get a f long and utterly frustrating it was to take this toy apart. After disassembly, I began reassembly. I wasn't sure how it was going to look or work, but I knew I wanted to have like a mono wheel. At this point in the build, I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to make a droid or not. I thought maybe I was going to make a mono wheeled vehicle of some kind. When I reassembled this, I ended up putting some of the pieces back exactly where they belong, just oriented in a different direction. My son donated some it was a toy from some movie. I don't know what the movie was about. I think it told some story about somebody torturing them or something. I don't know. I never really paid attention. After crushing it with a pair of pliers, I used my brute man force to rip the arm completely out of socket. I like the arms of this toy and it has a distinct robotic look to it. I was hoping that after a decent paint job, it would look less like a toy and more like droid arms. I took a couple of the gears and I glued them onto the socket above the shoulder. I guess they're called pauldrons. I don't know, I'm too lazy to Google it. If you know if that's what they're called or not, please correct me or confirm my answer in the comments below. I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it when I started bashing junk, but it turns out it's very cathartic. I have a habit of not being able to finish anything that I start, but with my transmissions and the builds, I have to. We're a little ways into the transmission now. I think this is a good time to ask you to like, subscribe, if you know of somebody that would like to watch these videos, please share it with them. The algorithm has flip-flopped on me. Most of my views were coming from non-subscribed. Now they're all coming from subscribed, and I only have about 
350 subscribers, so my viewership went way down. I've been throwing around the idea of doing a collaboration. If you know of a channel that you would like me to collaborate with, let me know. I'll reach out to them and let you know what they say. I'm also up to a building challenge if any creator out there wants to challenge me. I'm down. Most of this build is just putting the things back in the incorrect order. The non-humanoid droids in the Star Wars universe have non-symmetrical faces. Their eyes are in weird numbers, threes or fives. That's what I was going for here. They are also very utilitarian. You can tell their function by just looking at their form. My brother watches these transmissions and he implored me to give this droid some sort of Backstory, so with his help, I think I've hammered out a very decent one. I see some other videos cranking out one or two videos a week and that's just not very feasible for me. You see, I have to work to eat. It's not like where I came from where you could just snack on your underlings. No, here you have to go to like a grocery store and shop for food. It's not like back home where if I was hungry I would give one of my underlings a negative review and then eat them. After my build's done, I move on to making the base. I went to a thrift store and just picked up a lot of these coasters. I was too lazy, I didn't want to sand it, so I just took a knife and scratched a lot of paint off. Then I used tacky glue to glue down this mulch just wherever. I wasn't sure how I wanted to paint this, but I knew it had to be a decent paint job. Before I painted it, I made sure that it looked like the paint belonged there. But I wasn't too careful in making sure that the coverage was good. I knew that I would go over it again and you would hide all the imperfections. I took my time making sure that it looked decent, that there was no bleed over. If I got paint somewhere where I didn't want it to be, I took some uh, paper towels and got it wet and wiped it off. It worked fairly decently. If I made a big mistake, I went over and repainted over it.
If I had some vision for how I wanted the paint job to be, I would have painted it one solid color and then gone back and painted over the different colors, but I didn't. I didn't plan it out, so it ended up making me more work in the end, but I think it turned out okay. So the storyline is, Destroid's name is M0, N0, Mono for short. Mono was owned by a very influential family who lived on Coruscant. His purpose was caregiver, caretaker of their small children. Kind of like a robo-nanny but also because the children's parents were very influential. There were people who would want to kidnap and harm the children. So Mono doubled as bodyguard. Mono is very hardworking, very loyal, and will selflessly attack those who are harming his family. Mono worked for his family very loyally for several years until the children grew up and there was no longer need for him. Mono was then discarded. He was not deactivated. He was simply thrown out with the rest of the family's trash. Mono was then picked up by CD people, and through a list of long and scary adventures, Mono ended up on a junk world. Finally, a gang of junkers picked him up and used him as their junkyard dog and their laborer. He is finally at home. His new owners understand what expensive piece of equipment he is and take care of him to the best of their ability. He, in turn, is very loyal to them. So there it is, his name and his backstory. From Robo Nanny to check your dog. What do you think of it? Leave me a comment down below. Leave me a comment below telling me what you would like me to build next. This is your channel as much as it is mine. Have you been watching the new Disney Plus show Endor? I have. What are your thoughts on it? Do you like it? I happen to like it a lot. Maybe in a couple transmissions I'll just do a quick build and share my thoughts on why I think Endor is one of the superior Star Wars shows. One issue I have when painting is I have no idea when I need to stop. I made this wash and I just kept going over and over and over. I didn't know when I needed to stop, so maybe I need to, next time, dial it back a little. That's the only complaint I have really about my paint job. But it isn't really about me. What do you think? Do you enjoy the paint job?
I probably could have edited a lot of this out, made a shorter video, but even though it is longer, it's a more complete video. It shows the processes of my painting. I hope you appreciate that. After mono was complete, I turned to the base. I added a few washes, over washes, over washes. Dry brushed it. Added one more black wash. And then I was done. A dollop of tacky glue holds mono in place. And I definitely did not need to reposition him after money shots so here he is mono in all of his magnificent glory What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'm cool. So even if you don't like it, I'll still listen and respond. All right, this is it. One more plea, please like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and if you know somebody who would enjoy this video, please share it out. Also, one last thing, I have a link in the description that goes to my tip jar. If you enjoy my work, my music, my horrible voiceover, any of it you would like to tip me, I would be most appreciative. Turns out that busking on YouTube is not as easy as it looks. Oh well. I'm gonna keep plugging away at it.
Overlord is wondering if you can answer me a question. I forget, how do you remove the... Without getting blood everywhere? Please respond. End transmission.